Morning class, I'm Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School and this week we're looking at some of the differences and similarities between water mixable oils and traditional oils. So let's grab a brew and prepare the canvas board I'll be demonstrating on. So here I've got a 8 by 10 inch canvas board and I'm using a Sennelier brand neutral grey acrylic and some golden brand acrylic gesso. And this is to paint a light grey toned ground onto the canvas board. If you're diluting water mixable oils with water, you need to work onto an acrylic ground so it absorbs in. And by adding extra gesso into your mix, it will give you a better absorption when working onto the canvas board because sometimes canvas boards can have a shiny surface to them. Here I've got a two inch Purdy decorators brush. This is an XL Monica Elite. And to start with, I just push the paint into the weave of the canvas board to make sure it's well covered. And then I can go over the paint by overlapping brush strokes going in the same direction to get this nice smooth surface. Then I can just leave the board to dry and draw out my subject. These are called a Duo Aqua water mixable oils from Holbein. And the pigments that I'm demonstrating with are a permanent white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna and ultramarine light. In the traditional oils I'm using titanium white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna and ultramarine deep. It's not a completely even playing ground as the titanium white traditional oil has a better tinting strength and opacity than the permanent white in the water mix ball. And the ultramarine light in the water mix ball is a little brighter and closer in hue to the reference image than the ultramarine deep. But this is just what I had in my studio and they're close enough for this comparison study. To start with, I'm just using water to dilute the water mixable oils. And you can see when I'm working it into the paint that it takes quite a bit of work to get a good flow into the paint. The water doesn't cut through the paint that quickly. However, once you've got it into this thinner consistency, you can paint it on really easily and it grabs onto the board and even using the permanent white rather than the titanium white, you've still got quite a good coverage considering how thin that I'm painting it on. So I can add more water to the surface and then work that into the paint. And at this consistency, you can see the brush marks that are in the surface. So it doesn't blend and smoke together as much as when it's in a thinner watery wash state. At this stage, the water mix with oils will dry by evaporation to start with as the water evaporates out of the paint film. So this can mean that they're touch dry within about 10 minutes. It will then start a further curing process drying by oxidation, which is exposure to the air. And that's exactly the same way as traditional oils dry. So here I'm just blending a slightly thicker paint on top and it isn't pulling the paint underneath, it's blending into the colour underneath nicely. And now this is the fantastic thing about water mixable oils. To clean the brush I can just wash it out into water 
no solvents, no thinners, and I've got this nice clean brush to work with. And it's also very easy and handy for wiping down your palette just with water. Next we'll work with the traditional oils and turpentine, and turpentine is often abbreviated to terps. And I'm just adding a small amount of the terps to create a really nice flow to the traditional oil paint, and it's still holding some of the brush marks, but it just smokes in more easily to the board surface. I now add some thicker marks on top, and again it just blends very easily, it's not lifting the paint from underneath, flows very smoothly. So you'll see the difference between the two at this stage is that the traditional oil just tends to be a little bit more smoky than when you've diluted the water mixable oils just with water. For cleaning the traditional oils, I have to dip the brush into the turpentine and then wipe it into the paper towel, squeezing the paper towel to get the pigments out of the brush. So now we can judge how the water mixable oils handle when they're used straight from the paint tube. And here I'm using a size 4 ivory filbert brush from Rosemary & Co. So this does dry brushing is working pretty nicely. It's got a nice consistency to the paint and I can pull it down most of the pot just by using the dry brush, no medium at all. The one thing you'll begin to notice towards the edges of the paint that I'm pulling down is that the paint is gathering on the raised texture of the weave of the board rather than smoking into all the crevices as it would with traditional oils. So I'm having to add more paint on top to do that, to get that same level of coverage, but it's still covering the surface well, just with a little bit more paint.
So when I do the same again with the oil paint, just using the paint with no medium, the coverage here to start with is about the same. And when I start to dry brush the oil down, the paint it flows a little more easily. And what's always nice about traditional oils, they have this nice effect of smudging. So it feels like you can push the paint around and it still holds its opacity and even coverage. I mean, having said that, I'm kind of using about the same amount of paint as the water mixable oils to get that same level of coverage. So now at this stage, I'm just testing the blending the edge between the top of the pot and the background. Now, because the background was diluted with water, it's practically touch dry now, whereas the oil paint that I painted onto the pot is still wet. So it's, I'm having a real trouble trying to blend the two together because of those differences in drying time. So I just dip the end of my brush into a little water to try and help the blend. But here you can start to see some of the issues. It doesn't dilute the wet paint really evenly. It gives it more of a watercolor like wash effect to the edge. So rather than a smooth smoke between the two and getting this like nice creamy paint mixture, what you've got is one blended edge one watery wash that's kind of sitting on top of the other. And you could have, of course, changed this in your underpainting stage by painting a thicker background with less water dilution to start with. But it's just to show you the difference between the two if I'm approaching this in the same way that I'd classically approach a traditional oil painting. So here with the little turps, I take most of the paint out onto some kitchen towel and then using this almost dry brush just to blend the edge. And because the background and the pot are both wet and they smoke together easily. So now I've swapped to a walnut alkyd medium to try blending both the water mixable oil and the traditional oil. And there's a whole range of water mixable mediums that are available to use with the paints, but I've found you need quite a lot of medium if you want to try and get a nice desired flow consistency. But when you're using the walnut alkyd medium, a little goes a long way. So here it is, and it's blending in really nicely together with the water mixable paint, and it flows much more easily onto the canvas board than when we were just using the water. And because we're painting onto the canvas board, you'll notice it will still slip around a little bit on the surface. And this is just in comparison to a standard canvas, because a standard canvas is just more absorbent.
here I can start to build up a thickness of the paint onto the side of the pot and it blends in nicely with the colours underneath using this medium. So with the traditional oils, it holds into a solid film onto the surface and it feels like a little bit like creamier and butterier under the brush. It's not as transparent as a water mixable oil, but it's not far off. There's not a massive difference in it. So again, you can soften the edges with the oils very easily as they'll still both be wet. So here when I'm going back over the edge of the paint, what's happening is it's pulling off some of the blue that's already established onto the pot. And because it's still wet, as I'm reworking it quite roughly, I'm painting quite strongly, it's you know, pulling it. So this is just to be aware that if you want to go back over the oil, especially when you're on a board, having a softer brush handling kind of lessens this problem. Here with some white, yellow ochre and ultramarine blue, I can start to block in some thicker paint and then paint a finer edge using the side of the brush. So here I'm pulling the fresh paint into the very first layer of blue paint that we painted on that didn't have any medium in it. And it's still very workable, it blends into the profile of the pot nicely and it's working really well. For a final clean of the brushes, I dip into the water pot, take most of the pigment out, and then I can just rinse the brush around into some master's brush cleaner and just work this into the bristles 
and then do one more final wash in the sink just to take out those last few pigments. So here working along the edge of the pot, it's smudging in nicely and I can blend in that transition between the lights and the darks. The ultramarine deep is darker in hue than the ultramarine light, so the colour range will be slightly different, it won't be as intense. Drying times for the water mixable oils will be a couple of days quicker than traditional oils, but much longer than alkyd quick drying oils. So the main huge benefit is the ability to work without any harmful solvents if you're working in a small studio space or have allergies to the solvents, and still experience that working time available with oils. And there are many other mediums that you can use with the paints, such as a quick drying medium and stand oil, which gives you a more viscous mix. And you can work with these to adapt the techniques to get even closer to that traditional oil workflow. So if you think of the paints as water cleanable, solvent free, rather than the paint you only use water with, you can achieve much better results. Really hope this has helped. This is Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School.